All statements and opinions expressed by guests of the Adult in the Room podcast are strictly their own and do not necessarily reflect the beliefs or opinions of the host, producers, or advertisers. All interviews are presented in their most complete possible form in the interests of free speech. No statements should be interpreted as financial, legal, or medical advice. Listener and viewer discretion are strongly advised. It's the Adult in the Room podcast with Victoria Taft. That's me. Welcome to the Adult in the Room podcast. I'm Victoria Taft. As you know, undoubtedly, America is under siege by lawless mobs who look disorganized and decentralized, but who are anything but. You can text message a rent a mob and get numbers of people out wherever you want them in minutes. While they'd been around for years in such places as Seattle and Portland, where they'd come out like Punxsutawney Phil, but on May Day, where they'd vandalize the local Starbucks, they'd turn over trash cans and vandalize, that wasn't all they were doing. Now, their kindred, people in their groups, were torching ski resorts in places they didn't want ski resorts. This is all part and parcel of the same folks. They would take over swaths of forests. They'd make up fairy tales about spotted owls and man causing climate change to rationalize their holy destruction. They set SUV dealers on fire uh, and all the SUVs because they were going to, you know, stick it to the man. And they'd work in continuing criminal enterprise conspiracies. The latest iteration of the mob began in earnest in 2016 and 2017. If you lived in the Pacific Northwest, I was in Southern California at the time, but I had lots of, of course, I grew up here, so in the Pacific Northwest. So I I knew about these mobs. I'd been covering them for years. And in those years, 2016, 2017, they seized upon alleged police brutality, sometimes real police misuse of force. Don't misunderstand. There is actual misuse of force by cops, no doubt. And we need to hold them accountable. But going and being a part of a mob is not the way to do it. They also used a presidential election to ramp up the unrest. And they targeted the guy who five minutes ago was cool with everyone. He was a baller and, you know, had uh, friends of every color of the rainbow. But he chose the wrong side to nominate himself as the presidential candidate of the Republican Party. I mean, he said, I'm okay, I'll run in the Republican Party. And he and he won. And that was terrible. And so he's now he's a he's racist. Yeah, that's it. He's a fascist and a racist. So anyway, uh, then at that point in time, Trump supporters became fascists as well, by extension, and they were anti fascist, these people on the front lines, part of the mobs. And so Antifa, came into more prominence, and they said they were anti-fascists, which made everybody who disagreed with them fascists. You know what I'm talking about. And it sounds very, very familiar. But all Antifa was and is and ever has been, has ever has been as the latest iteration of the white knights of the Ku Klux Klan. They weren't anybody's white knight. They were actually the oppressors, if you want to put it in their parlance. The worst of the French revolutionaries willing to commit acts of violence to achieve chaos in the furtherance of power for themselves and chosen leaders. Don't, don't misunderstand me. This is all about power. It's depriving you of power and our arrogating power to themselves. That's what it's always about. They won't say that because that sounds too bourgeois, but in fact, it's true. That's what this is all about. They are the nation's red guard. And in 2020, pent-up frustration through the pandemic lockdown, George Floyd's death in police custody, et cetera, the deconstruction of the police and justice system. And currently, you can't even have a Christmas tree lighting without someone coming after the Christo-fascists. That's what we are. That's what I am now. Anybody who believes in God is a Christo-fascist. And the Jews are still the little Satan. That's what they call us. Because we can't have nice things when we must cheer on Hamas Nazis who committed the barbaric murders and terrorism against Jews in Israel because of the liberation of Palestine and all that. It just can't be a repudiation of a murderous attack by terrorists. No, no. It's uh, throwing up chaff. It's a maelstrom. It's chaos. 
noise, and fog. And in case you haven't noticed, it's not always one thing, it's always something. The leftist mob will always seize upon something, anything to rally their fellow revolutionaries. Because as we've learned, it ain't about the issue. The issue is the revolution. It's always something. More increasingly, it's become about body count. Do you realize that more people died in the George Floyd riots? Fires, cops, uh, hurt than, than anything that ever happened, even conceivably, on January 6th? I mean, that's insane. They have a body count, for crying out loud. Well, the revolution is this. What's it based on? Well, she, Van Fleet, knows. Who is she? You'll get more answers in a moment when we talk to her, but here's where you first got to look at her on the national stage when this tiny little woman attended the Loudoun County, Virginia, school board meeting to denounce the teaching of critical race theory, mind control, which is racism by any other name in the schools. And here's what that looked like. I've, I've been very alarmed about what's going on in our school. You are now teaching, training our children to be social justice warriors and to loathe our country and our history. Uh, growing up in Mao's China, all this seemed very familiar. The uh, communist regime used the same critical theories to divide people. The only difference is they use class instead of race. During the Cultural Revolution, I witnessed students and teachers again, turn against each other. We changed school names to be politically correct. Um, we were taught to denounce our heritage. The Red Guards destroyed anything that is not communist. Old uh, statues, books, and anything else. <clears throat> we are also encouraged to report on each other, just like the uh, Student Equity Ambassador Program and the Bias Reporting System. This is indeed the American version of the Chinese communist, the Chinese Cultural Revolution. The critical race theory has its roots in cultural Marxism. It should have no place in our schools. She reveals her answer in the title of her new book, her only book, the book she never thought she'd have to write, Mao's America, A Survivor's Warning. She, Van Fleet, welcome to the Adult in the Room podcast. You have no idea how many times I've started reaching for my computer after I've heard of one of your interviews and gone, I have to talk to this woman. And now I get to. I'm so thrilled. Well, thank you so much for having me. Well, uh, wow. Can you give us some kind of brief background? Because I know it's a very long background in your book, which, by the way, was wonderful to listen to it on audiobook over the weekend. Can, can you give us some background on surviving Mao, surviving Mao's cultural revolution from 66 to 1976 and what was in it so we gain an appreciation for how you're able to see what's going on in America today and have, it, have a direct analog to cult the Cultural Revolution in China? Yes, I lived through the entire Cultural Revolution. When it started, I was uh, in my first grade. And, uh, and two years was, uh, 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 was missing because school was shut down, because the students ousted the teachers and the principals. So we have no school for, uh, for, uh, for two years. After I graduated from high school, and there's nothing for, uh, for people like me, the young people, because the Cultural Revolution has ruined everything. There's no economy, no jobs. So, well, Sounds so that, yeah, it's just, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, so we were sent to the countryside to be re-educated by the peasants. And uh, so that was my experience during the Cultural Revolution. And why I say parallels? Because we are experiencing American Cultural Revolution right now. And uh, the, the uh, uh, similarities, the parallels are just alarming. Okay, and that's why. No, we have so much symbology of the Communist Party in this country with all of the groups that harken back to, you know, this uh, SDS and we have the literal Communist Party. We every every group from Antifa to Black Lives Matter to every iteration that of group that came up to create these new groups have always had that fist. Always, always the fist. Always. And and that's what I grew up with. And now I say it everywhere here in America, you know, all places. And that means uh, solidarity, and that also means revolution. And revolution about what? It's really a revolution to destroy the old world, to build a new world, 
the utopian communist world. And that's what the Cultural Revolution was about. Destroy everything, cancel everything out, and uh, and use identity to divide people so people will be at each other's throat. And you see what right now in America, the family, we just had Thanksgiving. How many families were having Thanksgiving that people, um, that, that everyone was, uh, was worried they're, they're going to have a fight? And or how many families have no Thanksgiving gatherings because they are on the opposite um, um, of the political uh, spectrum. Now treat each other as enemies. That's cultural revolution. That is the exact cultural revolution. Parents turned against the kids. Kids are turned against the parents. Neighbors against neighbor. Friends against friends. Everyone is against someone else. Yes, we saw that sort of crystallized with the pandemic in that you had the pro-maskers versus the anti-maskers, the pro-vaxxers versus the anti-maskers. And you had people, I literally was uh, surrounded by a small group of employees and customers at a store in Southern California for not wearing a mask and yelled at like I was in a struggle session. Yes. It's unbelievable. So here you are. So you yeah. see, okay, so I, I want you to address that, but I know time's limited. So I want to get to the point to where you were living in Loudoun County, Virginia, and you saw what was going on in the schools, and then you were yes. moved to act. Yes. Yeah. So I have to say that uh, when I left China, came to America in 1986, I thought I left communism behind me. I thought I left the nightmare behind, come to the country, and that is um, the country of freedom, and there's nothing I should, uh, I, I, I should be worried about. I will live happily ever after. And, uh, but 30 years later, I was dismayed. I was horrified to see communism is here. It's not just here. It's taking roots, and through the long march of the institutions, they already captured all our institutions. They captured our educational system, our churches, our government, our political parties, both parties, both parties, and uh, captured our military. And so 2020 became the turning point. When I saw the riots, I know this is, uh, um, this is absolutely a full-blowing uh, Marxist cultural revolution, and that all the bad memories brought back to me and I said, I have to do something. And during the pandemic, me, with millions of other Americans, finally get a chance to see what was taught to our children. And then the first thing that came out of, of that Zoom class is Loudoun County. And we see that we now, we, we actually get to see that the, the teachers were, were teaching CRT to our kids. So that's why I decided I have to get involved. I have to take action. And that's when I uh, joined the uh, Republican committee. And that's how I got to go to the school board. And so you go to the school board, you tell them this is, hey, you guys, you're doing China again. Uh, so what what happened as a result? We've had Azra Noz- Nozrani um, on the program. And um, we've had uh, others on this issue. But here you are. You're in the thick of it, too. And you actually affected change. Yeah. And I think that uh, when I went to the school board and I wrote it out, you know, I don't have one minute, and I you know, wrote it out what I wanted to say. And I thought, of course, everyone know. Everyone know this is like a Chinese cultural revolution. But of course, very few, very few people know. And I think probably most of the people there in the meeting, um, meeting room, were probably the first time to heard about culture revolution in China. Why people don't know? Good question. Because they were never taught. Why they were never taught? Because it was by design. They don't want to teach the American uh, kids. They don't want to teach the American public the horror of communism because the, those people are communists. They are American yeah. communists. I don't call them socialists anymore. I don't even call them the Democratic Socialist Socialists anymore. They're communists. They they absolutely presu- because the the ultimate conc- the conclusion, the the last stop of socialism is communism. That's the point of it all. 
Absolutely. And so, I have to say that when I started, and I, I started to call uh, uh, those uh, uh, radical left communists, and a lot of people say, don't use that word. The American um, will have trouble with that word. They think communism is uh, over. It's over there. It's, you know, the Soviet Union, the burning wall. It's all gone. So, um, no, I said, but there is communism. Because that's exactly what I experienced. And you saw and you saw CRT, critical, critical race theory. It, it, critical race theory is, is just a way of thinking about things, a lens through which we are supposed to take in the world. You saw that as something that the Cultural Revolution, the Maoists, did as well. Yeah. Only difference is uh, they use class. And because in China, most than you know, 95% of uh, population a Han Chinese. And we look alike, we share the common language, share the same history and everything. So they have to use something else. So it's class. But class would not work here. Class, uh, even We're too though, egalitarian. Yeah, the, the, the uh, uh, Bernie said is still pushing it, still 99% versus 1%, but it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. So the only way that they can divide Americans is by other things. And in America, it's race. And, uh, and then gender and the sexuality, and it goes on and on and on. And uh, but I have to say, the latest uh, story I heard is that uh, if, you, uh, if you sleep well, you, are, uh, you have privilege. You are the oppressor because a lot of marginalized people can't sleep well. Can you imagine? So they would go <laughs> on and on and divide people. And they, based on sleep. Anything, yeah, <laughs> anything that's good, anything that's normal, anything that's healthy, if you're fit, you are oppressor. And uh, they will try anything to divide people. Yeah. And then put people into oppressor and oppressed, victimizers and victims. And it was seen in its highest relief in the schools because you people could see it for the first time. The teachers yes. were not teaching. They were telling children how to think about the world, which was mind control. Absolutely. I would say they are not even teaching children what to think or how to think. They teach the children not to think. Because they, the only thing they, uh, the kids need is a trigger word. One trigger word, off they go, and then protest. They no thinking necessary, and that is the ultimate mind control. You stop thinking. You cannot think, and that's what happened in the Cultural Revolution for those Red Guards. They, they're robots. The only thing they know is follow mouse water, whatever that water was. Even the water says, go after your parents, report your parents, and the kids did it. Some of the parents were get uh, arrested, some uh, uh, end up being executed. And there was over 100 million people between the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution who were murdered in China. Most people have died at the hands of communists running the world from the Soviet Union, Ukraine, and China. Uh, uh, of course, in the post-Vietnam War in uh, Laos, um, in Cambodia, uh, as a result of the thinking about the world through the yeah. lens yeah. of communism. Oppressor and oppressed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is something that a lot of people do not know. And today, you know, you can, you can, the, the kids are just uh, uh, proudly call themselves communists. And then you ask them why they say communist is to, um, is uh, equity. And communism is a uh, sharing. Uh, I can tell you it is equity. Everyone will be treated equally, so everyone will be oppressed. Everyone yeah. will uh, share the same misery and the same oppression. Yeah. Yeah. That is uh, equity of communism. Yeah, you know, even during the, I was in uh, Beijing and Tianjin in the late '80s, early '90s. I well, okay. went twice, and um, you know, you could see the change in terms of opening it to the West and capitalism. Because, but what it was, I think, in retrospect, after re reading a, a good book about how uh, communist China always had, there was always a, of course, a black market. There was always the back door through which people could get all manner 
manner of things, but you had to have the money and you had to have the right money because there used to be two different kinds of oh, money in money. China. Yes. 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 And um, people would be at the, the friendship store going, change money, change money, change money. Um, yeah. Of course, I thought I'd get locked up if I did. But uh, but the point is, is that it just came out in the open. Now the black market was on the street, right? Yeah. It was on Embassy the, Row. Yeah. And I went to Cuba uh, 2017, same thing, two currencies. One is for foreigners. With that, you can buy things that an average uh, Cubans can buy. That's that's your communists. And the uh, the old presser were, was executed or uh, eradicated. Uh, replaced by them is the new oppressor. Those are the communist party bosses. They become the ruling class. Yeah. And the rest, you just enjoy your equity. That you end up in the same place. You told Glenn Beck in a recent interview that at the very end of it all, everyone ends up a slave. Indeed, slave. you came. You came from a. It sounds like you weren't a. a pre, you weren't a particularly. Uh, uh, you know, fancy family or anything. Your parents worked, but you still, you were sent to be re-educated with the peasants. You became yeah. a slave. Yeah. Not uh, just, uh, um, um, just me. Communism, the system is a slavery. Everybody belongs to the party. The party can, uh, can take your life away. The party can take your property away. The party owns everybody. Yeah. And one of the things I thought was interesting with parallels to today, you have you have giant big posters of the the targets of peop either people or things or what have you that were okay to victimize, mm -hmm. and that's similar to what I see now in some of yeah. these protests. There was always enemies. Communism they need enemies. They need people go after. Um, others and the enemy keep changing yeah. and uh, because they need this division and the, the, the reason they have the division is how do you control a big population if you keep them fighting with each other then it's much easier to control so that's exactly what's going on today americans were never this much divided we treat each other really with such hatred you, you just wonder where it's from well it's from indoctrination how could the uh, students hate their uh, teachers so much that they would kill their teacher in the, in, in the cultural revolution? You ask them why, they would not know. The only thing they know is that those teachers and, uh, and principals were condemned by the party to be the enemy. And then uh, once they become enemy, anything down to them is justified and celebrated. That include uh, torture, Beating, torture, and killing. You said and we are very, very close to that point. I think we are too. Now, instead of being the others uh, that were set apart and allowed uh, allowed the masses to go after the proletariat to attack, the teachers are the radicals and the revolutionaries. I know, and uh, we 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 saw the uh, in, just last week in the uh, in New York uh, in Brooklyn, I think the uh, oh, uh, yes. Hill Street the high school. Okay, I have quite a few things to say about it. First of all, those kids remind me of the Red Guards. But the only thing I said, I tweeted, in that culture revolution, the teacher would not, would not able to make a loud lie. We are very close to it. But at the same time, I want to say, teachers, many of them are indoctrinators. The uh, students you are trying to prepare activists, revolutionaries, when they are ready, when they turn against uh, their enemy, the teachers will always be the first one. Yeah, that I, I imagine so. I also uh, noted in, in Portland where we have a, a, a recently had a um, strike by the teachers, the teachers were um, begging the kids to come out and go on the picket lines with them. These are the same people who are being victimized because the teachers in uh, a downturn in the economy are now demanding a raise, which I find hilarious. And furthermore, after the pandemic, when they didn't work it for long periods of time, now they want a raise. And anyway, you could go, you know, the, the arguments, well, we have one teacher who said, well, I'm not going to give you a letter of recommendation unless you come out on the picket line with us. I mean, that happened. Yeah, that is that, that is uh, 
that's what doctor uh, indoctrination is about. Yeah. It's not about helping children and uh, teach them skills to prepare them to be successful individuals, to be a responsible citizen. The goal of an indoctrination mm. mill is to train them to be activists mm -hmm. and revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. And th that now we see the result. Yeah. And uh, they so, need to be fired. <laughs> yes. And the whole, we need to take back our school. The whole school system needs to be, yeah, it's totally broken and needs to be uh, um, saved. Saved by um, by uh, how I just said the uh, by parents. Parents, you got to get involved. You got to see what's going on in school. You have to go to school board meetings. You have to hold the uh, school board uh, members accountable, and you have to elect, help to elect the right candidates. We take back school by taking back the school board. Quota systems and the university systems are something that we saw during the Cultural Revolution. Can you expand on that? The quota is a little different. The quota is that you have to be read. Okay, what does that mean? You have to come from a family that belong to this red class, which is the class that is uh, uh, supposed to be the allies of the revolution. Your parents and grandparents um, in should be... Um, proletarian mm -hmm. okay and that's the qualification okay so you can be a you have to be a student. member of a certain class of people exactly but if you are excellent student you uh, have high achievement in academia but if your family belong to the wrong class the black class meaning you used to have money you used to have property no you're not qualified disqualified so that is uh, the uh, during the Cultural Revolution, not just cultural, in the CCP's uh, uh, reign. That is pretty much. Qualification is not uh, excellence. Mm -hmm. Qualification is the uh, um, political qualification. Yeah, it, 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 we, we choose you because you, you, we like you better, uh, mm -hmm. irrespective of qualification. Now, land That's ownership. Affirmative. That is a communist confirm, uh, uh, affirmative action. Yeah. So affirmative action is really has communist roots. Land ownership and going after landlords. You see it all over the United States right now where there are plans to make us a uh, uh, land ownerless. Yet we're going to be happy. We will own nothing yeah. and be happy. Tell me about that. Yeah, uh, of course, in, in uh, most China, we had nothing. We'll have to be happy. If you show that you are dissatisfied, if you show your discontent, you will be you will be condemned. You will be regarded as you hate socialist system. And some of them end up um, in the uh, wrong class, the black class. And then that will affect not just you, your children and your children's children. So I people don't... conform. People conform. Everyone conform. Yes. If you don't conform, what waited for you is gulags, prison. Or death. Do you see any uh, parallel like that in the United States? Absolutely, absolutely. That's how they um, they, they control the population. Um, if you uh, say the wrong thing, you're going to have a struggle session today, right? It's a uh, it's either in, on Twitter, it's in your workplace, it's in co uh, college campuses. You will be condemned, not just condemned. You will be condemned by the masses. The masses. That's always the key. And it's just it's public, the uh, public humiliation. The reason is that they want you to be the example for the rest. If you Bending don't, a knee. We yeah. literally had police chiefs bending a knee to the mob. We had yes. Nancy Pelosi bending a well, knee to the mob. Yeah, yeah. They are not doing that uh, to because they are big. they want you to follow their example. If you don't, you're racist. You're extremist. You're, yeah, in cultural revolution, you are uh, um, counter-revolutionary. Counter-revolutionary is the hat that fits everyone, just like a racist. You can be black, and if you're conservative, you're a racist. Right, right. You're, you're, you're a white supremacist. You're saying, yeah. White, uh, <laughs> you're black, so, but you're a white supremacist. supremacist. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's uh, the logic of communism. 
And we saw, well, when they started bringing down statues is when I went, um, okay, now, uh, we, first we've got the oppressor and the oppressed. We've got fake news about George Floyd, because I, I watched the trial of the um, police officer. You know, I'm, I'm not saying he didn't do anything wrong. He should have put him in a recovery position. But the fact of the matter is George Floyd was probably going to die that day anyway because of overdosing. I know, yeah, but, we know but that. But of course, yeah. yeah, but I mean, so we are sort of at the mercy of the news media, the news media are the tool of the government, the institutions. Yeah, because they have been captured. They have been captured so thoroughly that uh, the, the media tells lies. The uh, uh, Hollywood, they do the same thing. So every institution has been captured. And that's what's called long marches, long march through the institution. What is long march? A lot of Americans probably have no idea. Long March was the communist, uh, Chinese communist uh, army trying to survive of being wiped out. And they took this long journey, and which lasted a whole year, to escape and to, um, to northern China and where they rebuilt and they eventually took China. And uh, so the, the word Long March has Chinese Communist Party roots. And now... The, uh, the process is a slow process to capture all the institutions. And that started in the 60s. Now it's, you see the result. The result is we, as conservatives, we have no control of most of the institutions. And getting what, it, what is ironic about getting rid of the statues and that sort of thing is the Democrats, who are in control, or at least putatively in control, are... Um, erasing their own history. The, the other thing is the communism. Communists always, always uh, rewrite history. They always erase history and they always rewrite and they create fictional history. That's what I was taught when I was in China. And the history that I was taught was their version of the history and has uh, very little to do with truth. And so in, and a lot is about omission. And in America, a lot to do with omission. They don't just rewrite, they omit. They omit so much that Americans know very little of communism. They know very little of Chinese Cultural Revolution, which was not that long ago. I'm still a survivor, I'm still here. They know nothing because they don't want them to know. That's why when the uh, cultural Marxism, communism hit their face, they have no idea what that was. How do they know? They have no history, knowledge of history. They just thought that's something new. Maybe that's something they should accept. But to people like me, I know it right away. I recognize right away because I experienced it before. I know, not just know the history, I lived through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do we do? Yeah, I know. Million dollar question, what do we do? And I told you, I think a little bit uh, history of how I got involved. That I came here, I thought that uh, I, I would be just uh, live happily after, you know, uh, what can go wrong. And here in America, the land of uh, freedom, well, that's the mistake. I bear responsibility because I did not tell my story. I, f I choose to forget it. I thought that's something I'd rather forget it. I don't, I did not tell the story to my child, to my family uh, in America. I mean, I did not tell my friends, American friends, my coworkers, of the horror of communism. I'm just making it. Um, uh, I'm just making it up now. What I haven't done. We have to keep the history live. We have to educate the Americans. That's only the first step. Understand? That's why I wrote that book, and uh, the book that I never thought I would write. And so that book tells uh, wake up people that. What we are uh, um, experiencing now is a Marxist revolution, and then we have to take action. We cannot just be a patriot on the couch. We have too many of those uh, uh, couch uh, patriots. We uh, in Virginia, we just had our uh, election, and during the early voting and then election day, Republicans struggle to have uh, people to cover the booths to uh, hand out a sample uh, ballots. And the uh, next to me, you know, the uh, the Democrats, they always have plenty, three or, or, or more people. 
and we struggle because we have too many conservatives. They just coach, they coach uh, patriots. We need everyone to really get involved and take action. That's how we save the country. She Van Fleet, thank you so much for coming on the Adult in the Room podcast. The book is Mao's America, A Survivor's Warning, and it is. Please read it. It's not everywhere you can get books, and the audiobook's not too bad either. I thought it was pretty good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Adult in the Room podcast. To keep the programs you like to listen to, please rate this podcast with a fantastic five stars on your Apple podcast app every time you listen. And give me a great review. Plus, of course, subscribe to the podcast. It makes a difference with the big tech algorithm and the big tech oligarchs. And it makes us easier to find. Please get in touch with me on all the big tech stuff. Yeah, we're still there. Using the names Victoria Taft or the Adult in the Room podcast on MeWe, Parlor, Minds, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks to 1A Cast for imaging, editing, and production. The fantastic song is Gospel by the March 4th Band of Portland, Oregon. Music for Antifa versus Mike Strickland is Ride or Die by Raps by RC. The Adult in the Room podcast is also a production of Flamingo Road Studios. Remember, head up, heart out, and strive to be the adult in the room. Till next time, mischief managed. <laughs>